Just a few rules regarding this webinar. Uh, you can ask a question via the Q&A uh, module, which is available at the bottom of your screen. So uh, please avoid to use the chat. I will present the agenda in a few uh, in, in one minute, uh, but just maybe um, wait a bit to ask your question because um, uh, we, we'll um, discuss a number of points and maybe we'll answer your question uh, during the, the discussion and, and we'll have the, the question uh, asked at, at the end um, of the session in the last 15 minutes, but uh, please prepare, prepare your question. You can see the question from the others and you can also vote uh, for, for their question. So that we, we pick the question uh, that are interesting you the most. And also uh, I have to mention that this webinar is recorded. Um, thank you very much to, to join us today for this webinar about moving forward, uh, hitting decarbonization with the Helsinki Energy Challenge. Um, my name is uh, Julien Joubert. I'm working for the Covenant of Mayors Office and I, I am with my colleague uh, Thibaut Maracan from the Covenant of Mayors Office as well. Um, today we have the great chance uh, to speak about the Helsinki Energy Challenge. So the Helsinki Energy Challenge was a challenge launched by the city of Helsinki uh, to decarbonize its district heating uh, system, which is covering at the moment more than 90% uh, of, of buildings. And the heat produced at the moment is mainly produced uh, by coal and gas burning, and the city was looking for solution to decarbonize uh, this system. I have to say that this webinar is a series of uh, two webinars, in fact, and we had a first uh, webinar uh, two weeks ago. The first webinar was uh, mostly regarding uh, the technical solution proposed by the finalist of the Helsinki Energy Challenge. Um, to summarize very quickly, the solution um, uh, pro proposed by the by the finalists uh, emphasize the flexibility uh, that the new district heating system needs to have. Uh, also, that there is not only one solution, but a different technical solution to be implemented to achieve a full decarbonization. Um, electrification will will play a, a, a huge role in, in this decarbonization, according to to the finalist solution. Uh, with the development of heat pump and, and uh, electric boiler, for instance. Finalists also emphasize the, the need to uh, increase the possibility of uh, heat storage, of uh, uh, waste uh, heat recovery, and also decreasing the, the temperature of the district heating system uh, in, in Helsinki. But one of the main thing was to show that there is no need to burn anything additional in Helsinki to, to move towards uh, decarbonization. And an important point also of this first webinar was the fact that the cost uh, uh, will not be necessarily higher thanks to the solution to be, uh, to be implemented uh, on, on the long-term perspective, let's say, and uh, also finally emphasize the needs and the importance of, of reducing the demand also uh, of heating and, and of heating in buildings to achieve this uh, decarbonization. And finally, another point touched during this first webinar was also the, the need to have a multiple heat supplier and it required an organization of, of the market and some um, finalists were also proposing action model uh, to reach this decarbonization. But today we are going to speak about something totally different. Uh, we'll put the focus about the, the learning about the process of this Helsinki Energy Challenge. It's quite a unique challenge and we'll more focus on how we change the perspective of the cities, how the, the cities uh, um, implemented this challenge. It was a, a more than a year challenge and it has been a, a lot of learning in, in the process itself. And we also have the chance to have the perspective of, of, from one finalist and awarded uh, a team re regarding this process. Uh, we'll start directly with a discussion with the uh, Helsinki uh, mayor, Jan uh, Papavuori. Uh, thank you very much to join us to, today. And then we'll continue with a, a panel debate with uh, Laura Utu Deschriver, who is a former project director of the Helsinki Energy Challenge and uh, now is the head of the International Affairs Department uh, at the city of Helsinki. Uh, we are pleased to have today also Kaisareta Koskinen, who is the project director of Carbon Neutral Helsinki Project, and uh, as well as Corey Blackman, the head of technology of uh, SaltX Technology Company and uh, part of the Smart Salt City team. So thank you very much to, to join us now. Um, 
I will just stop sharing my screen and, and we start the discussion directly with, with Jan. Um, thank you very much to join us. Can you maybe explain us uh, what were the, the main reasons to, to launch the Helsinki Energy Challenges? Uh, of course, there is the idea to decarbonize the system, but uh, why it required such unique uh, approach. Can you unmute yourself, Jan? Thank you. <laughs> uh, two reasons. The first one was that we did have a tricky issue, a tricky problem, a tricky challenge, which we did not know how to solve. Uh, and the second one was that we wanted to organize our process in a way where also other cities around the world could benefit from our search for a sustainable solution. So in a little bit more words, um, the starting point is that we are strongly committed to be carbon neutral by 2035. Um, of course, it is a very comprehensive exercise, but in our case, the heating the city is, is the main source for emissions, which stands for more than 50% of all, also all emissions. And uh, of course, in order to be carbon neutral, you get need to, to decarbonize our heating system. Um, and, and actually, we have a, a quite tough uh, time span here uh, due to the fact that using coal uh, uh, for, for energy production is actually forbidden by a, a law in Finland from 2029. Uh, we do have two power plants turned by coal. The other one, the first one will be closed by 2023, actually announced yesterday. Uh, and we do have a, a, a solution uh, for, for that, but we did not, and we do not have for the, for the other one. Uh, the starting point was that uh, we could have an answer. We could choose the path several other Northern European cities have done, which is to replace coal by biomass, but we didn't want to, to do that. Uh, uh, and the reason Why? that the reason is that I mean, uh, even if Finland is the promised country for forest industry, uh, uh, and uh, we uh, have a long-lasting history and culture of, of sustainably uh, utilize our forests, I do not believe that uh, this scale use of, of biomass for burning uh, would be a, a sustainable solution. Uh, in the long run. I mean, it could be defined as a, a, a sustainable uh, solution in today's world. Uh, it, it is certainly uh, uh, defined as a, a solution uh, which uh, will cut the emissions, but, but in the long run, uh, as in the big picture, I don't believe it is, is a sustainable solution. And I wanted that uh, we do not lock ourselves into solutions which we not, could not be proud for of uh, from 10 or 20 or 30 years from, from now. And uh, when um, deciding that biomass is not an answer and it's not an option, uh, we ended up uh, not having an answer. Or we have made part of the answer. Uh, our energy company has of course done a quite, of, uh, quite a lot of R&D and, and of course they have several ideas. But, but honestly speaking, we did not have a, a, a comprehensive picture of the problem, or maybe of the problem, but we did not have the answer. Uh, and that's why uh, we decided uh, to, to, and taking into account that, of course, we are and we want to be uh, among the four running cities in this field, uh, in, the, in the world, even in the future. Why do you not do something really creative? Why do you not do something uh, different? And uh, why do not invite the rest of the world uh, to, to help us to solve the problem? And from the very beginning, I was, it was clear uh, and evident that uh, uh, we will certainly get a lot of ideas uh, which may not be relevant for us, but which could be relevant for, for some other cities around the world. And um, when the philosophy of the city of Helsinki is it's not only to, to, to uh, make the city itself carbon neutral, but also trying to contribute 
to, to the um, efforts of the rest of the world to do the same. Uh, I think that we thought that the, the, the competition would be a, a ideal model to like combine these two uh, great ideas which we had. Okay, so really it was a need to, to have a really long-term vision. What you, you had some solution to start, but maybe not for a full uh, decarbonization uh, and also the, the willingness to, to benefit to, to other cities. And also very interesting also is like the honesty that you, you had to say, well, we don't have the, all the solution at the moment for the long term, but we'll work with others uh, to, to find them. And that's uh, really also uh, good to hear so, such honesty uh, about this challenge, which is due and and but now we we had the competition let's say and, and we we get the result but what was the inspiration uh from where, where where did this idea of of organizing a competition come from why a design context let's say i mean maybe first it's like important to understand that as far as normal public procurement are concerned uh cities usually know what to order, what to purchase. Uh, now the problem was that we did not know. Mm -hmm. So we needed to tackle it from a, a totally different angle. And then the, the idea itself came from our experience where we have partnered actually with the city of New York, which has uh, been running these kind of competitions, which they call moonshot challenges already, already for a while. And we had uh, nice experiences together with some other European cities uh, where partnering with, with, with the city of New York, we could create a, a, like, not maybe an international movement, but a bigger global reach uh, uh, in, in order to, in, in that case, uh, uh, search for, for uh, solutions for, for uh, SME-related cybersecurity solutions. Uh, and, um, I mean, before that, that worked well, uh, and then and we could maybe try to take that concept to the next level. Okay, you, you already have some, some ID for the next level. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, mm, uh, solving a heating system uh, of a quite big city, uh, it's a, a much wider, uh, much more challenging, uh, you could even say much more important question than trying to find uh, some new equipment for SMEs in, in tackling cybersecurity. Yeah, sure. Uh, and what was the main uh, the main learning now after after the end of this uh, Helsinki Energy Challenge as a mayor? Because you you were uh, instrumental in launching this idea. It was your idea. Uh, it was, I think, I heard uh, quite a huge success also, uh, and, and it's interested also all parties uh, in Finland, let's say, uh, and in the city of Helsinki. Uh, what was the main learning for you? I think that the main learning was that it's not good enough for a city that you own your energy company up to 100 uh, percent itself but you need to be mm, like closer uh, in, in cooperation with, with your own, co own company uh, that you need to take a, a bigger role as, as, as a city in, in, in uh, solving and, and trying to solve the, the, the biggest challenge of, of the mankind of, of today's world that you can't like um, delegate the, the, the problem of decarbonizing your heating system to a, a company even if you own it up to 100 percent and the city itself needs to take a, a stronger role another big learning was that uh, that it's not a, a simple technical problem, but it, it's it's much more. The third one is that you need to create or you need at least to try to create a system which is flexible, as flexible as possible. I think that we have already so far learned that 
technology takes steps forward each and every day, and they are most probably much more mature and much more advanced technologies five or 10 or 15 years from now than today. And we, we should try to create a system where we do not clock ourselves to, to, to technologies which will be old fashioned uh, and out, out of time, I mean, already in, in the near future. Uh, that is maybe even more challenging, I mean, because you need to make some investments, you need to do some solutions because the city of Helsinki need to be heated even, even during our way to, to more and, and better and more advanced technologies. But, but uh, at, at least to try to create and facilitate a, 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 a ecosystem uh, which is, is flexible and adaptive to, to new techno technologies even in the future. Mm -hmm. So really it, cha it changes the way the, the city perceived its own, own role and, and the challenge uh, in, in tackling this challenge and also uh, uh, be open to future innovation. Uh, maybe just before you have to, to leave, uh, just wanting to hear you from, from what the what was the interest of this international approach and, and, and what, what it brings with international dimension in your in this challenge? Uh, I think that from the very beginning, as I was quite convinced that we will make a quite good international reach and that there will be a, 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 a keen interest towards our competition, but still it surprised me how well uh, we managed to do that. And I mean, still uh, several months after the, the competition was closed and the winners were announced, I get invitations to, to uh, I mean, important international platforms to talk about to talk about the challenge, not to talk about all the invitations Kaiser and, and Laura gets. So, so I think that we were able to, to, to create something which has really um, built some, some unique interest also in, in the international level. I think even this event which we are facing today is, is, is one example of that. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. It's indeed really, really impressive. Uh, and, and thanks for taking the time to join us uh, today. And uh, I will continue the, the panel okay. discussion uh, with, with yeah, your, your colleagues. Thank you so much. All the best. You too. Thanks a lot. Uh, so now we move to the panel uh, the discussion with uh, uh, Laura, Casareta, uh, and Corey. Um, and to continue on, on this process of Helsinki Energy Challenge and what is the, the situation uh, uh, in Helsinki um, now, um, maybe Casareta, can you say a bit more about the, the current situation of uh, Helsinki heating system? Yes, of course, my favorite topic. <laughs> so, but but maybe Laura, if you can uh, share a slide, so it would help. But basically, uh, most of the building uh, buildings in Helsinki they are connected to the district heating system. So it is more than ninety percent of the buildings are connected, uh, and uh, most of the district heat at the moment is produced by burning fossil fuels. So we have basically uh, four. Uh, big uh, combined heat and power plants. Two of them are uh, burning uh, coal. Other one is, is going to be shut down on, on 2023, 20, uh, as um, our mayor, you know, yesterday pronounced. And, and then uh, the other one have to be closed down because of the law uh, latest on, on 20, uh, 2029. Uh, then we have uh, two uh, natural gas combined heat and power plants, and they are like the backbone of the system. We have 11 uh, big load um, uh, heating plants, but they are only run on the very cold winter days. So in, 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 in the, the uh, picture down, uh, you, know, you can see that the fuel oil is about the 1% of the heat production. Uh, so it's, it's ours. A year, you know, when we are running those peak load heat uh, heating plants. Uh, additional to that, we have uh, the biggest 
three generation uh, heat pump station in, 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 in the world, Katarivala heat pump station. And actually at the moment, the, the energy company is expanding it. So it is uh, pumping a waste uh, uh, from uh, Sevits, uh, purified uh, Sevits water. Uh, we also have a heat uh, storages and we have uh, some um, wood pellet basically biomass burned on, on, on together on the, on the combined heat and power plants. But as you can see, you know, uh, uh, heat production is, is very much dominated with the uh, black and, and blue color. So uh, the rest is, is, is very small at the moment comparing to the, to, the, to the fossil fuels. And this is the system basically what we, what we have to chase. Okay, so it's indeed a, a huge, uh, huge challenge, um, and, and it requires this unique approach. Maybe, uh, Laura, can you, re I mean, explain us a bit more the, the competition process, also uh, what were the different steps uh, and the key phases for for this challenge? Yeah, thank you, and uh, welcome everybody from my behalf, and thank you, Covenant of Mayors, for organizing this. Um, well, firstly, we took some time, some months to really think through that what are we actually wanting to achieve? Is this a technical co competition for different technologies as per se, or is it something more? And as the organizer was City of Helsinki, not our energy utility, we realized that we need to we need to and we want to keep it uh, very open so that we announce that we have a challenge within the city of Helsinki. Uh, we have a system uh, and the way it's operating at the moment. And we had evaluation criteria that were important for us. But the rest, we will let the innovators to come up with the, with the solutions because we knew that we will need technological solutions, but we will also need non-technological solutions. So after after the kind of design phase of the challenge, we ended up uh, design, this, deciding that we will run it as a design contest, meaning that it, we are actually, like we put it, we are in search for master plans on how to decarbonize, decarbonize our heating system. So uh, it's not enough that you just send your, that you send your marketing brochure describing your technological solutions, we asked a bit more. So that was the first uh, important decision that we made. Then we also realized that, uh, just to add what our mayor said about why we decided to launch it internationally, uh, we knew that by opening it internationally, we get not only solutions that uh, we haven't seen yet, but also we managed to challenge the discussions that we have here within the Helsinki. Because people who know our current system, who know all the dependencies, uh, who knows the the way our current energy utility is working and who knows how the city has been working in the past, they will be locked. They may be too locked by thinking about those interdependencies and so on. And we knew that if we open it internationally, we will get fresh views from clever minds who, who don't see that. They see the issue, they see what we have to reach and then they uh, innovate solutions. Um, so we, uh, we started with the open application phase and we decided that it has to be rather easy to submit your solutions because we did not have any award for that phase. We couldn't really ask you to spend weeks or months to designing your solution. So we wanted to make it rather easy to, to send the application. So we said that, you know, in the application phase, you have to impress us so that your solution is potential solution for us. And then we select the most promising solutions for, for the uh, co-creation phase. Of course, the COVID-19 hit us badly, uh, which um, uh, we had to then take a deep breath. We launched the challenge 27th of February uh, yeah. with this care of what's happening in the world and when will it hit us. Uh, we had the first international event in London, 12th of March. And in the morning of 11th of March, uh, everything was you know, cancelled. And then little by little, everything else was cancelled. And we were like, okay, let's take a deep breath. What will we do? Because we had many international partners who wanted to host events where the key would have been to make the innovators of that country to not present their solutions in silos, but to really challenge themselves and to join this challenge mm -hmm. in more diverse team, which we believe is needed in this uh, wicked problem we have. Uh, 
so we extended the application phase and we turned the events to uh, webinars and webcasts and we opened an online uh, networking platform and so on and so forth. Uh, and then, how many how many applications did you did you receive uh, for the first phase? Uh, we got uh, for the uh, 252 um, uh, applications. We had team members uh, more than 1,500 from 35 different countries. So we were of course amazed by the by the amount of interest that uh, this whole challenge created. And we we knew that okay, we created something unique. That there was a demand. Mm -hmm. for this kind of systemic approach. Uh, but it was also a very, very hard work we had then in October. You can imagine we opened the challenge very openly, not giving any categories or anything like that. So we ended up, of course, getting a lot of different type of solutions. Uh, so the October was um, uh, for especially Kaiseretta, who, who is also a technical expert, I can tell that we did not sleep a lot during those <laughs> certain weeks. <laughs> but we also gathered an advisory board to help us in uh, selecting the best solutions, because it was really not easy. So we had people from different uh, organizations from Finland who were evaluating from different angles the solution. Some were seeing them from the very technical point of view. Are the technologies mature enough considering mm -hmm. our 2029 deadline? Some were watching it more from the, from the market side and more from the economic point of view and so on. So we got a dedicated team who gave their time and resources to, to evaluate the solutions. Uh, and then we ended up having the 10 fantastic finalists, which all had promising elements, and we knew that they will grow during the co-creation phase, uh, which then started in November. Of course, when we, ex when, we expected, when we extended the deadline, we thought that, oh, by no means, if we have the co-creation phase and the boot camp in December, you know, COVID-19 will be history and we will welcome <laughs> the team to Finland and so on. Well, that didn't happen. Yeah. But we had a <laughs> three days very intensive bootcamp with the finalist teams where they met the decision makers from the city. Uh, so what, how the decision process goes within the city organization. They met ec technical experts from our energy utility and they met some external experts uh, who gave their time to, to help the teams. And they also got like feedback from, from us, like where should they focus perhaps when they find you their proposal. And that was really the key uh, part of the process. Then they also got more information from us and also uh, more guidance that what are we expecting and so on. But still want to highlight that from the 252, there were definitely other interesting solutions as well. But it was just, you know, considering all the seven evaluation criteria and our situation, um, uh, some of the interesting solutions were excluded, even though they can be very interesting for some other cities. And therefore, we are now making some efforts to. to share those solutions as well. Okay, can, can you maybe tell us a bit uh, the, the criteria because you explained that it's uh, we're not only looking for, for just a technical solution, but a master yeah. plan with yeah. uh, different criteria. Maybe it's interesting also to, to, for, for people yeah. to know. Uh, we ended up having uh, seven evaluation criteria, uh, which of course climate impact uh, was one of the important ones, uh, as well as the uh, implementation schedule, because you heard from our mayor and Kaiseretta that the coal-fired heating plants has have to be closed by, by 2029. Uh, then we, we were evaluating the implementation feasibility, so different feasibility factors, not only the technological feasibility, uh, and the cost impact, which was actually very hard if you consider the different type of solutions that we got. That was a hard, uh, uh, like difficult to compare them against each other if you consider then the, the all evaluation criteria. Then we were evaluating uh, the impact on natural resources. Um, and now I'm forgetting something. How many did I already said? Climate impact, cost impact, impact on natural resources, implementation feasibility, implementation schedule. I'm missing out to uh, Secu security. Yes. Security, exactly. of security of supply and capacity. So we, yeah, and that was also, we did on purpose, we said that we are looking for solutions that help us to get rid of, help us to decarbonize our heating system. But we didn't want to say that it has to, it had to be a system that will give us a hundred percent solution to get rid of the coal. Because we knew that there might be interesting solutions that then score high with some other dimensions. 
So we really wanted to keep it open. So yeah, seven evaluation criteria. And you see it's already some months. So I, <laughs> and the sun is uh, melting my brain. <laughs> no, but it's really, really interesting and important, I think, to underline because, um, um, I mean, I really encourage you to, to have a look to the, the, the final, finalist solution proposed that you have a description of the website of the Helsinki Energy Challenge because it's really a, a broad thinking about this uh, huge transformation which needs to be to be undertaken. Uh, maybe, Laura, uh, what would you do differently if you have to do again the, this challenge? <laughs> That's a tough question. Well, <laughs> first of all, I will try to have a little bit larger group of people helping me and Kaiser. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously speaking, of course, we had uh, people in, uh, within the organization who were helping with the practical arrangements. But I think something, I don't think I would change, but I would consider twice. Uh, because the fact that we did not put uh, different categories for the competition made the evaluation process pretty hard. So if we would have had a category for the most promising future solution or for the most innovative solution or for the most, I don't know what solution, it would have made it a bit more easy to evaluate the uh, proposal against each others. Uh, we, we decided not to do that because we thought that if we keep it all open, we will really let the brains of the innovators not be locked to think about any certain dimension, which we thought that it's not something that we should do, but it would have helped the evaluation. Uh, so I would at least, if not do differently, I would consider overnight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Um, and maybe what's really interesting also is that um, when you look at, at the finalist proposition and so on, uh, uh, we can see um, all the input they needed from you to, to do all the modelization about the different possible solutions. Uh, can you maybe say a, a few, few words about the, the, uh, how long it takes and how the amount of work that was put on gathering all the necessary data to, to provide to the financial team, finalist team? Sorry. Yeah, well, firstly, in the already for the open application, Phase, uh, we put quite a lot of resources on gathering a kind of a report that describes our current heating system in the level that we thought is enough for the people to be able to submit their application. So we had a report describing our current heating system, the kind of the technical details, and then, then also about the Finnish, uh, you know, climate and so on. So data that we thought is relevant for, for the teams, but then also all the teams had had a chance to uh, send their questions uh, already during the application phase and then we provided more information if it was needed. And considering that we are a public organization, we had to be very careful that every team get the same information. So all the questions and answers were also public, publicly available for other teams. Then in the second phase, in the co-creation phase, the teams, when they knew and learned that they, can, they will be invited to, to the second uh, round, they had a chance to already at that phase, uh, submit additional questions to us. And when they heard about our kind of uh, input on how they should further develop their solutions, they also have got additional questions. So each of them could ask more questions and we aim to answer the questions either in a written uh, way or during the co-creation phase. So during the co-creation phase, the program was also built based on the questions of the finalist teams. And we also highlighted the teams all the time that they are in the driver's seat. They have to ask the questions uh, because the solutions were also quite different against each other. We couldn't provide answer that satisfied each team needs. Uh, mm -hmm. Each team needs. And also we didn't necessarily know what the teams need because we didn't know how they will further innovate their ideas. Uh, so we did our best. I know and Corey probably can mess, share his experiences as a finalist team. We were not able to provide all the information that the teams wanted. There were certain very detailed technical information uh, that either was considered by our energy utility as a, a business secret and they were not willing to share it, or we simply did not find the answer. But then we try to help the finalist teams on helping them that, okay, the level of information that is enough. Uh, and we gave some, some numbers that they can use, for example, for, for heat consumption or for 
certain price levels and so on that they can use when they make their next phase proposal. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thanks a lot. I think it's really interesting because every every city willing to have a, a heat planning is decided uh, will need also to work on this question of, of data and so on. Um, yeah, be, before uh, moving to to the perspective of of, uh, of a finalist, uh, uh, just a, two two questions for 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 Kaiserita. Um, yeah, what did you learn by, by being in contact with the finalists and, and, and working with them? And also, what was the craziest idea that you, you received also in all the applications? Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, I learned a lot. So, it was really, uh, I have been working on the energy se sector like uh, 20 years, but it was really that kind of, you know, um, two-way learning experience because you know I, I think that you know when we really got the teams that were thinking out of the box you know it, it was it, it was also opening my thinking and, and it was you know this is you know great way to think about it and, and of course you know they know a lot and they had a lot of uh, new technologies they were proposing and, and it, it was you know really that kind of you know uh, learning ex experience for I hope for everybody and and the craziest ideas you know as a physicist I was uh, thrilled uh, because there was a um, perpetual motion machine proposed and you know it's it's always physicists they they love that kind of proposals and and it was you know one of one of the craziest ideas but then there were also you know um wind windmill uh, but not operating uh, that kind of a uh, normal wind but operating with uh, solar wind and it was up in the space but you know, uh, we thought that you know maybe the cost impact was quite high, and also there was no um, idea how to transmit power from space to the Earth. So that's why it was not amongst the finalist teams. But it was quite you know that kind of out of the box thinking. So that maybe we can utilize the solar wind instead of you know the normal wind. But you know many 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 very wild ideas. Okay, that's really interesting and good to, to know. And I think it will, uh, well, yeah, as Laura mentioned, uh, you, you're working also to make available uh, more of these ideas uh, that were submitted also outside of, of the finalist team. Um, I, I will just ask participants yeah, if you have any question uh, for, for our panelists, it's the time I think to ask them uh, or start to ask them. Uh, before that, I will uh, give the floor to, to Corey and the perspective of, uh, of a finalist. Um, maybe, yes, Corey, can you say us uh, what did you learn uh, about uh, working with a city? Uh, I don't know if you had experience before to, to work with cities, uh, about the perspective and, and the way they are working and the challenge they are facing also. Yes, so um, hi, everybody, and thank you for having me here. Um, Yes, we've had some experience with working with cities. Um, I can say that in, in general, there are quite a few incentives as we go further and further and we understand more about the, the climate challenges. Of, I would say over the last five to 10 years, there's been a lot more work in terms of decarbonisation. I think uh, most people have, have that clear. Um, there are quite a few incentives when it comes to in deploying and employing renewable energy and energy efficiency systems and some new technologies, etc. Digitalization is also a, a big part of it. But uh, one of the things that it uh, has always been a challenge is that it's, it's kind of very spread out. Um, there's uh, a lot of interest. That, OK, we want to be carbon neutral or, or by this specific date or we have a strategy of doing this but uh, I think uh, a lot of times there's no roadmap or master plan as, as Helsinki has been talking about um, to actually do this and this is what I think is um, something that is going to have to uh, more cities are going to have to work towards because uh, it's quite important as, and as a as a, a uh, as a winner of the challenge one of the winners of the challenge and as a finalist within the challenge when we were going through the overall process of of, of thinking about the technologies and how they're going to be deployed etc it it come it dawns on you um how short period of time 
2029 is. It, initially, when you think about it, it's like, okay, it's in, in nine years, it's in nine, eight years or something like that. But when you start to, to go through the different planning and looking at permissions and stuff like that, you see that, ah, well, it's actually not so long. So I think a, a greater sense of urgency is actually needed um, for, uh, for a lot of cities to really address this, this challenge because th we need to start yesterday technically. Um, then there's also something that I've, we've thought about a lot is, is uh, the, the whole difference between, let's say, transition and transformation. Mm -hmm. And so we talk a lot about the transition, the transition towards renewables, the uh, transition. And there's some cities and uh, some nations that can do a transition because they're quite far along in the path of actually getting there in, in the, the 2030, 2040 mark that a lot of, of, of cities have set. But when it comes to, but many cities also would have to do a transformation where they have to make very, very significant changes. And uh, this is something that is uh, a, a huge challenge and will require uh, quite a bit of collaboration and, and thinking and, and work towards it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, it's also was said a, a bit uh, the importance of, of the collaboration and putting uh, everyone uh, around the table uh, yeah. also and, and having cities uh, having this role of, uh, of um, pushing, um, I mean, pushing the ecosystem and, and, and the collaboration between all actors. That's really yeah. important things. Yeah. And can, can you tell us about the also your your one of the of the winner of the challenge? There are mm. there were four four winners. Mm. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the solution that you proposed? Yeah, so uh, it uh, was uh, electrification. I'm um, using renewable um, electricity quite a bit. Uh, 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 mixture of, of mature technologies. So as you mentioned um, before, a lot of heat pumps and electric boilers, that type of stuff, but then also an innovative spin on it with our innovative storage technology, which is um, based on, on nano-coated salts. Um, it's a flexible and long-term storage, which is quite gonna be quite important when it comes to not only looking at the, the daily or the diurnal differences in, in energy demand and also energy supply from, from renewables, but also when it comes to the longer period of, of changes. So from more seasonal or even month to month uh, when it comes to uh, for instance, wind um, energy generation, solar generation, especially during the, the hard winter months that <laughs> require quite a bit of heat um, within the heating systems. Um, then we kind of, we melded that with um, artificial intelligence. So we worked with a company called Rebase Energy, um, which uh, deals with data and digital tools in order to, to simulate and optimize different energy production, storage, and also demand. So I think uh, quite early on in the process, we, we tried to develop a method because we see this and also with the, uh, keeping with the ethos of the, the Helsinki challenge to be able to use this for other cities. So the idea was to, to take these different technologies, uh, they have different pros and cons and disadvantages and advantages and limitations and, possibilities, etc., and try to understand, okay, how do we patch them together uh, in the best way? And how do we optimize them? And we, of course, they need to take into consideration the forecasting for renewable energies. We need to take into consideration consumers, um, demand management, um, potential for prosumers. So people who um, have installed uh, renewable energy assets um, how they would fit into it um, using waste heat energy streams um, and also looking at the overall market. So it's uh, quite a lot of things that need to be taken into consideration, which I thought was uh, a, a daunting but exciting challenge in, in any case. <laughs> But just fix it to to at least uh, uh, think and, and do a, a winner proposition. So I think if you you manage yeah. it in a way, <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, uh, as you mentioned, the, the implementation is a key issue. Yes. Yes, and one of the things that we looked at a lot because, uh, as I said, the timeline was quite short. So we looked very much at being able to deploy 
things quickly. We looked at very much of flexibility and the potential for future proofing. So resiliency, and we see that uh, with this um, high temperature energy storage, it, that gives a, a lot of uh, possibilities for that because it, then you uh, because it produces higher temperatures what can happen is that you don't need to lower the temperature in the district heating network immediately this is something that can be phased in over time because that's also a process that's going to take some time mm -hmm. and then uh, when it comes to retrofitting a reuse of, of actual infrastructure so it could we reuse the assets that are already in place for from the um, coal plants that are going to be shut down or or the combined heat and power plants that are, are using gas today and to use that for for energy storage instead so this was uh, a main part of our our okay. submission what, what, what uh, when you speak about high, high level temperature uh, which which level is it around so we can go up to 450, 500 degrees or so. So, uh, so technically, you could also produce electricity. So, because also when you when you shut down more um, the CHP plants, you also reduce the amount of electricity production within the city. Uh, so this means that you will have to bring it in from lines from, let's say, renewable energy sources or import it from other parts of Europe, etc. So it was also interesting to be able to if, uh, be able to also produce. Um, electricity during the the peak times as well so uh, that was also and uh, something that we've thought about a lot in our submission mm -hmm. okay and uh, th thanks a lot for for this uh, uh, elements um, and, and regarding the process of the challenge uh, i mean laura was mentioning about the question of, of data and uh, and how there were some uh, discussion between the uh, city of Helsinki and, uh, and the finalists. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the most important thing to take into account uh, when organizing this challenge or, or what you will get for, from this process, let's say, the most important point of all the, of, of, of the process, let's say? Oh, where do I? <laughs> that's a that's a big question. Uh, it, it, I mean, from uh, there are two perspectives that one could have, like from the city perspective and also from the team perspective. And so I can start from the team perspective. I think a lot of it is that we it, it's a very multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary challenge. So getting the right actors, getting the right players involved and, and uh, having a lot of open collaboration and collaboration across borders. I think one of the, the challenges of the pandemic is that the, you weren't able to meet physically, et cetera. But then also one of the positives, I think, is that a lot of at times we were more comfortable um, having lots of Zoom or team meetings and Teams meetings and that type of stuff. So it really could get some of the creative juices flowing in any case. Uh, from a city perspective, I think, open exchange is quite important. Um, the, having the right data and also having very clear goals. Um, we, we had a lot of challenges in terms of deciding which level we need to be at. Uh, I think that was the, the, the biggest challenge to how deeply should we go into this? How, how many steps? Because uh, a lot of members of our team are, are quite, um, experienced in in developing energy systems and working uh, with different energy systems and etc and so how deeply do we need to go into to determining the climate impact or the cost etc was was something that uh, i think is very important to, to to find that balance and this was a, a challenge i would say uh, the main challenge that we had um in what developing our submission to the level of details that you achieve more or less i guess uh, it depends on the criteria and so on I, yeah I, I so guess, but uh, just to to better understand yeah so i mean in terms of the overall criteria we try to meet all of them so of course we calculated uh, the co2 reduction or the emissions reductions we calculated the cost and there was a deployment roadmap and all these different things but i would say that certain parts got a little bit more attention than others. And so it was a, a kind of back and forth. And also it depends a lot on, on the team members. Some team parts of the team liked certain aspects that were <laughs> versus other aspects where it's, uh, yeah, oh, we need to go further into the costs. Uh, who is going to do that boring bit? <laughs> so... <laughs> 
yeah, so there were there were there were quite a few. Uh, let's say I would say we we got a we got a, a fairly good balance, I think, uh, in in the end. But it it was a, a a challenge to really try to keep the same level of detail within all the seven criteria. Okay. Uh, maybe I will give the floor to, to Thibaut to um, get some questions from the audience. Because there have been few of them. So if you have any questions for our panelists, it's the time to, to ask them in the Q&A section. Yeah, thank you, Julian. Thank you all. Um, there was one question, one first question uh, from Pedro um, asking about the, the next steps, how pra practically the, the solutions, the idea would be then uh, translated on the ground. Shall I? Yeah, so I don't know, I don't know. you too, yeah. 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 Uh, first of all, uh, all four uh, uh, winning proposal, as well as all finalist proposal, as well as the other proposals we got were kind of analyzed that we figured out the elements that were highlighted by the solution. So we, we know now that the, from which kind of elements the future heating system is uh built from uh but then of course this for award winning uh, uh solutions they will of course be further evaluated they have some synergies they have some similarities uh i think it's fair to say that it's unlike that any of them will be implemented as such and that was of course not the idea either because they are kind of systemic proposals elements for the city elements for the our energy utility or elements for the third parties. So it will be rather be like a combination of those and uh, some other solutions that eventually will be implemented. It's also good to remember that in the case of Helsinki, where in the past, uh, the energy questions were sort of outsourced for the city-owned energy uh, utility. And as we all know, the energy sector is in the huge transition, meaning that you need to consider many other aspects as, as well, such as Uh, building level solutions or the energy efficiency solutions and the consumption side and so on. So we understand now much better as our mayor said that the role that we need to take. We cannot only watch things through the lens lenses of our, of our district heating system, we need to see the whole system within the city borders. How the city processes will speed up uh, Uh, the implementation of certain solutions, how, how are they streamlined with the decisions that our energy utility uh, will be making, and how do we build here such an ecosystem where there is space for innovative companies in the future. So the whole sector is in such a, such a large change that uh, it's not that we can take one solution and start implementing, we need to take much broader look. But I can guarantee you there is a very very strong process that this whole competition has started in co cooperation with the city executive, with the executive team of our energy utility and with external uh, stakeholders where we analyze our learnings, where we analyze the winning proposals and where we will make the decision on the next steps. Uh, so definitely more to come. But we need to take this, this period now because it's not a one player that implements solutions, it's a multiple approach that we have to take. <clears throat> Thanks a lot for the for the answer. Um, then I see two more, let's say, technical um, questions, uh, and I think it will be more directed to to Corey. So I think I will take those two questions first. Uh, the first one is how do flow batteries compare with uh, molten salt? And uh, the uh, second question is what is the overall charge discharge efficiency? of the Salt X energy storage? Mm. Uh, so I can say that Salt X energy storage is actually not a, a flow battery per se. It operates something like a flow battery, but in, in, in general, it produces, it, you put in um, heat in the form of the electricity or heat in the form of waste heat, and that's how we charge the system. And then when we discharge, we get quite back high temperature heat because it's a thermochemical reaction that it undergoes. Um, when it comes to overall or overall efficiency, efficiencies up to 90% or so are possible, but it depends a lot on, on what are the operating parameters. Great, thanks a lot, Corey. Um, and then there is an, a more, um, yeah, 
different question, I think, directed to, to, to the colleague from, from Helsinki, um, asking if there are other uh, cities in Europe interesting, interested in implementing or at least part um, of, the, of the proposed solution that you received. Well, we, we definitely hope so. <laughs> and I know some of the teams have continued discussions with, uh, with some other cities. And we are, of course, not part of those discussions. We've been the intermediate uh, for those discussions. Uh, so there's been a great interest for the solutions themselves, but then also for this approach. So you can put 1 million euros to purchase a consultancy report ending up in your files and you can put it as a, as a prize and having a multiple learning. So that's something that the many cities have been uh, interesting on the approach. But yes, uh, I know some teams are, are having uh, discussions and we want to act as an intermediate. And I really encourage all of you who are listening to go to, to, to read the, the finalist solutions. We want to, we have had a little bit delay on the opening uh, the other solutions as well due to some confidentiality reasons and technical reasons as well. But not only that, we want to uh, also analyze the solutions a little bit. You know that if you want to have an, if you are in the need of an X type of uh, solution, here are 20 alternatives to do that. Or if you, if your challenge is this, here are 30 alternatives to solve that challenge. Because we got interesting kind of sub-solutions that other cities could benefit from. So great interest, but of course, I don't know the exact discussions because we obviously are not part of those discussions then anymore when, uh, when the cities have contacted the teams. All right, thanks a lot. Um, I see one more questions from, from Miguel uh, asking which building efficiency levels so, um, concerning the reduction of, of demand uh, was taken as a reference for developing the, the solutions. Yeah, it was a 20% of a reduction on district demand by 2035. So it's actually quite high quite big reduction on, on demand. But but City of Helsinki, we have a very ambitious uh, plan as how we are going to do it. So it was a given to the teams. Thanks a lot, uh, guys. Some, sorry, yeah. Julian. Yeah. No, yeah, I was go just, ahead. Funny, I remember during the process that some teams were like, are you really going to achieve that? And then Kaisa Rita, who was in charge of the program, uh, was like, don't you believe me? <laughs> I'm putting all my time and effort on that. Then <laughs> we had a uh, funny discussions uh, throughout the process. <laughs> Great. We, we have a few more uh, questions coming in the Q and A, but I think um, we 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 are running uh, out of time. It's already almost the end of uh, our webinar. Uh, so maybe I encourage you to, to uh, contact directly our speakers and, and we'll circulate uh, the, um, the, their, their contact, uh, especially I see also some technical question for, for Corey. So mm -hmm. really we encourage you to, to, to reach him. Um, maybe just uh, final words uh, from, from all of you and uh, maybe from, uh, for, from Laura about uh, um, feedback from citizens that you receive in the city of Helsinki about this energy uh, challenge? Yeah, I think that in, in general, the feedback was that, uh, well, first of all, we know that we are empowered by the citizens. Climate change is one of the biggest fear that the citizens in Helsinki have. We have done some kind of research on that. So we have the empower, uh, empowered by the citizens to do and act as a city to, to make sure the city is carbon neutral. The overall uh, discussions here in Helsinki was that people were extremely happy that we uh, take an active role as a city and that we honestly announce that, hey, the city is heated with fossil fuels and we need to do something. And we want to invite not only few players to submit solutions, but, you know, to really openly uh, open the discussion. So very positive feedback uh, from that. Um, and also I heard that I saw there was some comment about the, uh, where are the other winning solutions. So all the solutions are on the website. Uh, we share them openly. 
uh, we will have many other webinars where also other winners are talking and have been talking and we'll have them and uh, feel free to, free to contact the teams yourself if you are organizing events. Uh, there are really great solutions among the finalist teams. So, but on the energychallenge.hell.fi, the, the 10 final solutions are openly uh, available. And thank you for everybody. Thank you for being with us. And I really, like in the previous webinar, somebody said that it's not difficult to decarbonize a city. Just do it. And it takes a bold, bold uh, decisions in the different layers at the city, but you can really do it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Laura. Casareta, if you would like to, to add a word. No, thanks for having us here. And, and you know, if you uh, want to hear more or discuss some technical topics, you know, you are free to contact us and then, you know, we can have that kind of, you know, a separate discussion. Especially somebody was already interested about the energy efficiency questions. So, you know, um, it's my favorite topic and I'm more than happy to discuss about it offline. <laughs> Thanks. And Corey, maybe if you uh, uh, would like to add something. Yeah, I, I think it was a, a very, very fun process and very interesting process for all and very definitely very helpful um, for, for me personally and also for the overall team. But I think one of the things that I can um, talk about is more about the the sense of urgency that's needed and the amount and the action that's needed um, in order to do the decarbonization in order to, to meet these the climate goals so uh, we've planned a lot over the years and i think it's really time to to put in some actions now so <laughs> indeed and we need uh, innovators and, and city uh, bold city taking action and, and putting all the people together. Thanks a lot, uh, really much. It was really interesting, the discussion. Thank you for, for your time. And um, and thanks also to all uh, participants. I will just uh, close uh, this webinar with uh, one thing uh, that would like to remind you that uh, the Covenant of Mayors Initiative uh, has renewed uh, his ambition and his political commitment, and we really encourage uh, all cities to renew their commitment uh, on uh, on the website of the Covenant of Mayors. And I presented this new commitment uh, in the first uh, webinar of the series. But your uh, yeah, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact us. And as well, always finish that we will be really happy if you could uh, give us a feedback on this webinar and. Uh, uh, Thibaut sent you the link uh, on the chat. So please, if you can take uh, one minute to, to, to fill this uh, feedback questionnaire, it would be really nice. And with that, I would like to close this webinar and thank you again, uh, our uh, all panelists and uh, also all, all uh, people to, to attend today. Thank you very much and have a really good day. Thank you.